Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 12 of our Geometry Dash game on Scratch 3. Now in case you've not watched parts 1 to 11, I will leave a card for you right here. So in parts 1 to 11, we did quite a bit of code. In this video, we'll be finishing up with the ending of the game. And in the next video, we'll probably work on the animation as well as the sound effects. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is to head over to the finishing line and I'm going to put this ghost effect back. So I'll probably do it right after we hide and you need to remember the score it's okay. So it's 6950 and I'm going to head back into the player and change it right here to something very close to that. So let's set X to about 6900. Um, zero, zero. That should be a decent number. Um, what I'm also going to do is to create a new variable and this is called player1. Um, this is going to help distinguish uh, whether we won the game or whether we lost the game. So either way, whether we win or lose, we're going to get out of this, um, get out of this repeat until loop. And once that happens, we need a way of distinguishing the two. And this variable is going to be what does that. So I'm going to head over to the stage right now and within the init, uh, when I receive init, um, I will set here the player1 variable to be no because at the beginning the player obviously hasn't won. And then I'm going to head right back to the ground engine or actually not the ground engine but the y engine uh, which I have to find which will take me a second because the code is very very bundled up here so there it is this is the y engine. Um, what I will do is I will write after this if uh, if then where we check you know for vis if we're touching the visible obstacles or the invisible obstacles I'll be checking if we are touching the finish line now in case we are touching the finish line um, in case we are touching the finish line I'm not sure yep it's here in case we are touching the finish line then I'll do two things so first of all I will set game over to yes but I will also make sure I set the player one variable to yes. So now that the player has one, we can basically distinguish this um, in this first case right after the repeat until. So we can put all of this code within, you know, if player one is not the case. So we can say if player one is uh, if player one is equal to no, and I need to get an equal to, I'll probably duplicate it from here. So in case player one is equal to no then we can pretty much do all this stuff. So broadcast player death and wait, etc, etc, etc. But in case player one is set to yes, and I'm going to need some more space here. So let me drag this up. So in case player one is set to yes, then we're going to do a couple of things. So first of all, we're going to use this function called get direction. And this is going to be a kind of complicated function, which I will get to in a second. So we will have two, um, we'll have two parameters here. So one is going to be X and one is going to be Y. Those are two inputs and we can also run without screen refresh. So basically this gets the direction to a particular point. So in case we want to, uh, you know, know even uh, what direction our player has to point in to get to, you know, let's just say um, this point where my mouse is, then this uh, function would find it. It's also going to do a little bit more stuff, but I'll get into that later. So what I'm going to do is drag this right at the bottom where there's a lot of space to continue. And then I'm going to head right back up. So I'm going to put right here, get direction. And I'm going to use the coordinates 180 comma 100. So that's going to be the coordinate uh, where our player is apparently, you know, going to slowly fly and fade away too. Um, you can change this depending on, you know, if you think the coordinates are, you know, too low or too high or too much towards the left or too much towards the right. But I found that this coordinate works really, really well. Now, next one I'm going to do is to make sure that we have the actual animation because this just gets the direction that we need to go and we need to make sure that the animation happens. So the code is kind of going to be similar to what we did here. We're going to repeat 20, but here instead of broadcasting death tick, I'm going to broadcast another message called end tick. And this is going to be where the player is going to fly. Um, once we're done with end tick, what I will do now is broadcast another message called end game and this is going to be when we're basically you know um, hiding all of the sprites and we're getting into the end screen um, for the end screen tick after this i'm going to do something similar so we're not going to have the end screen just showing up uh, immediately we'll have it slowly fading into the screen so to do that we need another set of ticks 
and uh, I will call this end screen ticks. So similar to end ticks, but it's going to be for the end screen. Now, finally, once we're done with all of that, we can show uh, the player uh, the play again button so that when we click on that button, we can restart the game. So to do that, we can say show play again. So we basically we're broadcasting this message uh, and that's pretty much it, right? We don't really need to do anything else. I uh, won't in fact be covering these two. I'll just be focusing on end tick and end game in this video, but in the next video, we'll finish those two things. All right, so now let's head over to that function, which we um, put at the bottom. So basically this function needs to get us the direction. So the direction in this case, we'll call it, uh, we'll set it for this sprite only. Let's call it theta. Um, and uh, it's important you guys, uh, for you guys to just follow me here because this is going to get pretty complicated. Okay, so let's set theta um, right now to be the a tan of uh, the a tan. So you can change abs to a tan. Um, and you can put right here um, x, actually not right away, but you can say x minus uh, x minus the x position and also for y. So we're going to duplicate this once. Oops, not the x, but the entire thing. So we're going to say y minus a y position and we're going to divide these two things. So let's grab a divide and we're going to say x minus x position minus or uh, divided by y minus y position. Now the reasoning is pretty simple. So you can imagine a straight line for the y axis and the direction is the angle which the object forms with the y position, not the x position. And this gets confusing, but it's with the y position. So if this is the angle right here and we're looking up, the x position in the, uh, the, um, the, x position in the triangle is going to be the opposite side of the angle and the y position is going to be the adjacent side. So uh, hopefully you can visualize that. Um, and we're basically taking the a tan of that or the inverse tangent to get the angle. Fairly straightforward. Now we can get the sine and co uh, uh, the sine and the cosine of that theta angle. So let me call this first theta sine. Um, let me copy that and let me create another variable called theta cosine or just cos. Let's set it for the sprite only, then click OK. Um, we will be setting theta sine uh, to be simply the sine of theta. So let me duplicate that. Let's chuck all this out. Instead of a tan, you can simply say sine of theta, right? Just put this here. Um, we can duplicate this entire thing once, change this to be cos. So change this to theta cos and you can change this to be cosine or cos of theta. So these two are fairly simple. Now next, we're gonna come up with something called theta distance. So let's make a new variable for the sprite only called theta dis, all right? And uh, basically this variable is going to cover the distance that we're gonna move through the, uh, through the diagonal um, part of the triangle. So we're, uh, so we're not gonna move you know, in one step, we're not going to jump from here to here. We're going to move in a series of steps across the hypotenuse. So um, that's going to be about 20. And uh, to do that, we need to set theta dis. So theta dis to be here. And it's a little bit tricky. So just follow me along. You can duplicate this x minus x position, but you can get a divided by. So put the x minus x position first. And uh, here you can say 20 multiplied by whatever theta sine had to be. So once again, we're using the trig ratios. And in case you do know a bit of trigonometry, this should be quite easy to understand if you do it on a piece of paper. But uh, I'm just gonna uh, go through this quickly because this isn't really you know that important, right? It's just the output which matters. So we're gonna have 20 times the theta sine here. And finally, we're gonna set x. So set x, uh, set x, where is x? Yeah, set x to be a part of that, right? So we're gonna set x to be whatever theta sine happened to be, and we're gonna use a multiplier here. So we're gonna do theta sine, oops, that was not necessary. We're gonna do theta sine times whatever the theta distance is. And similarly for, um, similarly for y, we're going to set, uh, we're gonna set it to be theta cos, times a theta distance. 
So uh, for the theta distance, you can actually set it um, to be y minus y position divided by 20 times cosine theta, and that's going to give you the same result. But this just makes more sense, right? I'm just I'm using sine. Um, basically, x and y here are not some fixed coordinates. They're going to be um, they're going to be the um, the increase in the x and y coordinate for each tick. So each tick we're going to move uh, whatever our x position is plus this x and whatever our y position is plus this y. That's the whole point. So hopefully this did make sense. So this is probably the most complicated part of the video and uh, in case you made it through, this should be quite easy from now on. So now I'm gonna move ahead and let's make sure that our animation works. So I'm gonna move to the side and let me grab, uh, let me grab an end tick. So when we receive end tick, and this is where we need to slowly move to the end of the stage, um, we're going to do the two things which I mentioned. So we're going to change uh, whatever our x position is by x and we're going to change whatever our y position is by y. So those two are going to be similar. Um, but we're going to do one more thing and that is to uh, kind of rotate to make sure we, we're being sucked into this. That's the impression we're going to give. So we're going to turn clockwise 15 degrees and we're also going to slowly fade out into, you know, the ending. So let's make sure to add in some ghost effects. So you can see change uh, ghost effect, uh, change ghost effect by five each time uh, because 20 ticks and we get to 100 in by 20 times five. Um, you also need to make sure that you have this clear graphic effects when we receive a net and without this things are going to be pretty bad. Um, that's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm going to test it out right now and you can see that you know, the um, the player moved in pretty ne uh, neatly. You can play that again and again, and I think this looks pretty satisfactory. Uh, I'm gonna end this video right here. In the next video, we'll be completing, um, we'll be completing the end screen, and we'll also get into the sound effects. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.